In 1948, the National Party was elected and began a new policy called Apartheid. Colored people were now segregated from white people with no rights to the color. The word Apartheid had been used once before, in 1917, in a speech by John Christiani, but wasn't mentioned again before the 1940s. There were three main groups of people, whites, blacks, colored and Asians. All the colored couldn't vote for the elections. They couldn't live where they wanted to. Their life was limited and the government were even capable of taking their home from them. All the best things and stuff were for the white people. Things like cinemas and even some restaurants were limited to the coloreds. The colored population could only have a bad education and they weren't allowed to go out on the streets and behave like the whites. They weren't allowed to have a boy or a girlfriend of a colored person. And in 1950, the government banned marriages between whites and people of other races and prohibited sexual relations between black and white South Africans. A lot of people were against apartheid and tried to change the system, even if you whites hated it. A political organization called NAC tried to encourage people to break the apartheid law. For example, the cutter went out in the white people areas to demonstrate. They tried to eat in white people's restaurants and they went with white white people buses. But the government didn't want to change. It quickly became violent and soon the police began to arrest and sometimes hurt demonstrators. Demonstrators blew up important things like factories and police patrol cars. Later, in 1976, children began to protest on the streets. Thousands of people were jailed and hundreds of people were killed. And in the 80s, almost every country were against apartheid and the government. Other countries kept South Africa out of things like the Olympic Games, which led to, finally, in 1991, the apartheid surrender. The African National Congress was founded in 1912. Its goal is, and has always been, to increase equality between races and to secure a democratic South Africa. Before Mandela became a member of the party in 1943, people in the ANC had the opinion about getting the white people to feel the same horrors as the black people felt. However, when Mandela joined the ANC, he reshaped their ideals into a more democratic country where all races could live side by side in equality. A new way to think of things such as forgiveness and keep the past as past. In 1991, Mandela became the president of the Congress and he retired from the ANC in 1997. Mandela, Mandela's friend and Mandela's partner, Oliver Tambo and Walter Soslo. Together they formed and started African National Congress Youth League. ANCYL. The league is open for everyone between the ages 14 to 35. And all members over the age of 18 had a bigger responsibility to take part in the general political life in the ANC. The intentions with this league was to teach young people to take part in solving problems that face the youth. Also, to make sure they contribute to the work of ANC and the nation. ANC also have a women's league and a veteran league, which is the same just in another target group. When Mandela became the president in the ANC, he started to make peaceful and non-violent demonstrations. But that wasn't effective enough for the ANC. ANC started making violent groups of people almost like an army. It was all about fighting against oppressions and the apartheid. And this was reason enough for the white government to put Mandela into prison. He started to hide himself into disguises, such as a driver or a worker, but the police caught him anyway. He was arrested in August 1962 and transferred to Robben Island in May 1963, where he lived in his own cell. On Robben Island, 
Prisoners were forced to work every day, such as cut stones, but Medela got a job as a gardener. When he wasn't working, he spent a lot of time writing his own political books in secrecy. Actually, he was hiding his manuscript in the small garden he was taking care of. Also writing letters to his family. He was on Robben Island for 18 years, and after his time here, he spent the next 9 years of his life in Pulsmore Prison in Cape Town. Nelson Mandela was born on July 1918 in a small African village. His father gave him the name Oli Lala, which means troublemaker. At the age of seven, he began his British education, and his teacher gave him the name Nelson. When he was nine, his father died. Nelson Mandela completed his junior suffocate uh, before moving on to the college in Fort Burford. While he was at college, he took an interest in running and boxing. After college, he was forced into marriage. He would marry her, so he went away to Johannesburg. It was in 1931, and for the first time, Nelson Mandela um, experienced the reality of apartheid, and he decided to join uh, the organization called African and National N African and National Congress, also known as ANC, soon became a popular friend figure. After the ANC had won the election in May 1994, they selected Mandela as president. On the 10th of May in Pretoria, when the inauguration of Nelson Mandela took place, there were 4,000 guests, including world leaders from diverse backgrounds throughout the world, and millions of people watched it on TV. In national closely, the government was now controlled by the ANC, who had some experience in the management, but contained representatives from the National Party. Mandela, who was now president, moved into the presidency of Tumwis in Cape Town. Mandela presided from apartheid minority multicultural democracy, but his main task was the reconciliation of the country. After the apartheid, white people were treated by the blacks because the blacks had a vindictive immersion inside them because of the apartheid. He was trying to reserve and defend the South African whites. He meant that the black people had to forget about the past and keep it as past didn't want the repression of whites happened to other European colonizers in Africa. He created the broadest possible coalition. Mandela found many ways to reunite South Africa. He believed that he could do it through rugby as well. In South Africa hosted the Rugby World Cup in 1995 when Mandela urged all blacks to support up about the team. Many black people hated the rugby team Springboks because the blacks thought that Springboks represented the apartheid. Springboks beat the New Zealand in the final. Mandela was able to hand over the trophy to Captain Francois Pernard. African people start wearing a, a Springbok shirt with the captain number six on the back. This event was a major step in the direction of equality. Mandela's administration in her right a country with a huge difference in wealth and service between white and black communities. Of a population of 14 million, about 23 million lacked electricity or adequate sanitation. 12 million lacked clean water supplies. With 2 million children are not in school, and one of third of the population is illiterate. There was 33% in employment, and just under, under half of the population lived below the poverty line. Mandela stepped down as president of the ANC at the 1997 session in December, and even hoped that Ramaphosa would replace him. ANC chose Mbeki for the position. In the entire African continent, South Africa has the largest economy of all. 
It is a middle income country with many natural resources, which include the world largest production of platinum, manganese, and chrome. And half of that export consists of gold, precious stone, and diamonds. It is also uh, the country's most important export article. Although South Africa has an upward economy, it is not good enough to help the poorest people in the society. 11% of the population lives below the poverty line. A lot of, peop a lot of poor people lives in squatter camps under really bad conditions. People are daily starving. Their respiratory problems connected with asthma and pneumonia is common among the children living in these camps. Diarrhea and untreated uh, infections are daily occurrence. The high range of fat in South Africa has its outspring from the major difference between poor and rich. South Africa is a lot better today than it was during the apartheid. But even though it is the richest country in Africa, it still faces a lot of problems.